Good morning, today's January 12th, so I'm staying in Denia for the week for a bit of a cycling training camp. And today's video will be slightly different than my usual videos. Bit of a vlog style day in the live video because I thought it would be fun. But firstly, let's head to breakfast and try and catch up with the women's Sanderson and under which started last night. Today we finally take on Kolderatis. Not the hardest climb, but one that most of the pros do on their training camp. 6.5 kilometers, 5%. We can do this. When the ride started, it didn't take long before we met our first friend. Mamma mia! Hola! How are you, man? Pretty good, pretty good. How, How are, are you? you? Good, good, good. <laughs> Where are you going today? Uh, just to Rathis and back. My issue is usually that uh, when it's steep, I run out of gears because <laughs> my bike is uh, not the best, oh, nor, yeah, am, yeah. nor am I, so. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get there. Yeah, oh, nice you, mate. Oh, anyway, enjoy. enjoy the rest of your training. Enjoy it. Ciao, ciao, man. Bye-bye. Right. But obviously, Juan has to train a bit faster than I ride, so we went our separate ways. So today's ride will take us from Hotel Synchrosfera, where we're staying, to the top of Colderates and back. I didn't want to do a crazy ride today because I got a meeting in about three hours and if I'm not back then I'm not at a meeting. So gotta make sure I'm back in time. Today's ride is also not an attempt to go as fast as possible. Just some Z2 riding, get kilometers in, burn some calories. We're now riding through Yosa de Camacho, a small village about halfway towards Colderates. It's underrated, for me at least, how climbing the road towards Rates is from the hotel. It's basically a climb I'm doing before the climb. Zone 2 rides are so much easier outdoors compared to indoors. You can just look at everything around you, but also the cooling is much better. It's just a better experience. I'm a pretty scared descender, but I'm actually really starting to enjoy it because I I know the technique, it's just about overcoming my fear to apply it. And obviously I'm not going through the corners as fast as I should be going, but hey, we go step by step, speed goes up every time I do it, so that's the key. And at the end of the descent, I met our next guest, Archie Atkinson, world champion paracycling in the category C4. So yeah, we decided to climb Colderatis together. But hey, now you'll have the slowest tempo ever up Rates, so enjoy. I've got a secret. I've cleaned my bike for the first time in seven months this morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I was curious to know more about Archie. How does paracycling work, for example? Normal bikes. Yeah. There's five categories. Okay. C1 to five. C1 being the most impaired. Yeah. So the Spanish guy with like one leg, you C1. And yeah. the C5 are people with low level CP. Yeah. Or like missing hand. I'm C4. Yeah. So I've got cerebral palsy in all four my limbs. Yeah. So everything affects like balance, power. Yeah, I get that. Everything. It's a bit annoying sometimes. I get so that. Live with live what you got. Could be worse. Yeah. Do you have any race at all? What? Any local races in the UK? This I'm year? not doing one. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be working yeah. quite well. Me dying, you're having it easy. As someone who mostly follows road cycling, I was really intriguing to hear about what paracycling is like and I'm definitely going to check out some of Archie's races this year. But anyway, after a solid 40 minutes of climbing, we topped Colderatis. Nice to meet you, man. Enjoy Have a nice ride. You too. Ciao, mate. Ciao. But actually, this was not the first time I did Colderatis this week. A few days earlier, I decided to do Colderatis all out trying to get the fastest time from the bottom to the top. And there it is, the start of Colderatis. Let's begin. Thing is, I've been perishing the entire climb, but I actually feel good. I'm trying to pace according to my heart rate, which I know 168, it's about my threshold heart rate, so. I'm dying. Can you pull me up?
In total, I spent 37 minutes and 55 seconds climbing Colderates. My power meter said 261 watts average, but I think my power meter is overreading by quite a bit, so I wouldn't trust that. But as comparison, the current record is held by a Colo Quick Rider, Peter Uxenberg Hansen, 12 minutes 38, so my time is three times higher. And funny enough, just after I finished my all out test on Colderates, I heard from behind me someone shout, That's the guy from Twitter. And it was John Degenkolb talking to Roman Bardet, which it was an absolute pleasure meeting those two. Before we continue, Sirocco just released a brand new beginner's kit collection. Super affordable, yet still qualitative. I enjoy wearing their core Portoid jersey in combination with their SRX Pro Elite bib shorts. You can get 10% off any Sirocco products through the link in the description or with the code Benji Nelson. Check out Sirocco. There we go, cold out is completed. The sign of completion right here. Now we gotta get back home. Fuck. And on the way back to the hotel, I met some followers of the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, so that was an absolute pleasure. Oh. 41.7 kilometers, about a two hour and a half ride. I'm really happy about that. But this video isn't over yet because I'm gonna try something I've never done before. Tonight I'll be sleeping at a simulated altitude of 2000 meters. Synchrosfera, the hotel I'm staying at, lies at 78 meters altitude. But in this hotel they have what's called hypoxic rooms. Basically a room that adapts the oxygen saturation in the air overnight to simulate what it's like being on a specific preset altitude up to 4500 meters. Basically at sea level there's 20.9% oxygen in the air and the higher you go when it comes to altitude the lower the oxygen saturation in the air is. Yesterday I had to perform some kind of altitude tolerance test to see how my body reacts, responds to altitude. During this test a mask was put on my face and I had to breathe only 10% oxygen for 5 minutes, simulating what it's like on 6000 meters altitude. Now at the end of the test, I'll be honest, I'm a bit skeptical about it because I felt no difference at all. But according to the doctor, this graph suggests that my heart rate gradually increased to compensate for the lack of oxygen. As a consequence, the doctor decided that we should sleep at a not so high 1600 meters altitude. Now instead of following the doctor's advice, I decided to uh, ask for 2000 meters because well, everything for content. Reality is, I'm just sleeping on this simulated altitude for one night, so it's extremely unlikely I have any positive effects out of this. I just want to experience what it's like, this process of going into a hypoxic room, what needs to be done to test how high you can go, all that stuff. I want to experience it. So yeah, good morning. Welcome to the day after. I survived my night in altitude and I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting any any changes for the better necessarily after one night on altitude. You need more time on altitude to have that. When it comes to negative ones, I actually feel pretty good, so I can't complain. That same morning, I received a text message from the Seratizit WNT women's team. An invitation to go with the team on a training ride. Absolutely terrifying, but I said yes. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. I'm gonna die today. Yeah. <laughs> it's alright, Catherine just said they're stopping for coffee, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. After 10 minutes, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice meeting all the riders of the team, like Milena de Zoute, Katrin Schweinberger, Lana Eberle. But I'll be honest, these are pro cyclists. Even on a training ride, they ride harder than I can manage, so... I was hoping I could hold on for at least 10 minutes. I know that my power and power to weight ratio is significantly lower, but it's not just that. My technique as well, every corner I get gapped because I'm not paddling through it, unlike them. And that costs me so much energy to close the gap every time. And while the team was doing a zone 1, zone 2 ride, I was doing a threshold ride in their wheel. And after about 10 minutes, I was gapped at a roundabout and it was all over for me. This ride was really fun, but incredibly humbling as well. Let's be honest, we all knew that would be the case, but obviously, in hindsight, I can't follow a professional athlete, even on his own two ride. 
I'm afraid that brings us to the end of today's video. One and a half days in my life during my cycling training camp here in Denia. We did some cool stuff, in my opinion. For example, we had a solid ride out, met some cool friends along the way, Archie Atkinson, Juan Ayuso, and so forth. We tried out Hypoxic Room. It was a fun experience to figure out how it worked, but it's hard to conclude anything without doing it two, three weeks. So we'll have to leave that at that. And lastly, we rode with actual pro cyclists from the Certis at WNT team. We learned a lesson that we kind of already knew, that there's a solid gap between pro cyclists and people like myself who aren't necessarily the most fit, but relatively average humans. I reckon it'd be cool to try that again next year after riding a bit more this year, after getting better on the bike, losing some weight, and seeing if I can hold on a tiny bit longer. But hey, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.